How to's! Hey guys, so we can start here. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a tutorial. At some point during driving, you are going to bump your wheels on the curb, and you're going to get little pieces flaking off, and it's going to start looking a little bit gummy, a little bit horrible. From there, you're going to have corrosion come in underneath, and it's going to just only progress and become worse from there. So what I'm going to firstly show you is a little bit on how to refurb your wheels and how to take off the old paint, fill her over, reshape it so that you can put on a new layer and also today I'm going to be teaching you how to paint in chrome effect. So the first thing we're going to need to do is clean this wheel. So as you can see this wheel is pretty dirty. It's also if you look around the rough edges that shows that it's a little bit curved up, it's a little bit unhappy. Now what we're going to do about that is once it's clean, we're going to start sanding that off. But as you can see by the finger marks, the brake dust, and just the general dirt, the first thing we're going to need to do is take off that dirt and get a nice clean surface to work with. The first thing I'm going to do is just hit it with some degreaser and a rag. It's just a dirty rag that you can use on anything and a bit of degreaser just to get the worst of it off. What you want to do is get it on in all the little nooks and crannies, absolutely everywhere. Not too much at the same time though because it does evaporate quite quickly. As you can see straight away the difference. I'll spray it on this side so I don't know if it's coming out too well on the camera. So compare this one to this one in just a moment and you'll see that while not perfect, the vast majority of the dirt is instantaneously removed. I'm probably going to put this into uh, time lapse or just speed it up uh, because cleaning's cleaning. They are far cleaner than they were before. You can also, if I zoom in on this, for example around the valve, you can see a lot of blister in there. A lot of that paint is going to come back off. The reason that's blistering is around the valve cap, the lacquer has started to peel away where it's not being painted as well, being from factory paint. Factory wheels are never painted as well as you get from when you do a professional refurb. Basically, that has just allowed a little bit of moisture to get in underneath and that's just going to cause corrosion from underneath. So, now that I've got it sort of cleaned up, or cleaned up enough, you can see around this edge, you've got a lot of curve in here. This is, I've knocked a curve, it started to peel up. It's possibly taken off some paint straight away uh, and from there, there's like a little lip underneath, dirt's got in underneath, corrosion's going to start building up around there. And basically it's just going to work from the edge inwards. And the longer you leave it, the worse it's going to be basically. If you nip it in the bud when it's just sort of like this, it's a really easy repair. If you leave it a little bit longer like I have with this, or with over the other side there's another one, this is going to be a little bit of a longer repair. However this, and all around here, and definitely, definitely the little bits up here, five minutes with a sanding power and you're like then gone. So I'm going to get on with sanding this back and we're going to see what progress we can make. Need more degreaser in it, so there's not a huge amount of point me continuing on because whatever I take off I can't clean up. So I'm gonna go and get this tire taken off and we're gonna come back and uh, yeah. Forward planning useful. The 
tires have been taken off as have if you look in close the valves this is important to me on the basis of being able to get a nice clean job out of it I will also be removing and replacing the M Sport badges just for the sake of it being really nice and clean now now that I've got some freed up space and everything is just the metal I can start looking at really working into some of the rough edges for example this edge here you can even see even though I have rubbed it down slightly lots of little nicks on the edge and they're going to have to be worked down and potentially the deep ones fill it over so there's plenty for me to be getting on with mention is that it is very important especially on the flat faces to get every little nook and cranny from being shiny so if you see over this side you've got shininess here and how I've worked it down to a dull mat and that's because I've got a nice surface now it's all being rubbed down it's all even there's no dirt or there will be at least no dirt once I've got it all degreased but it will be a nice flat surface for the primer to adhere to. I'm going to need to make sure that every single shiny area is covered for. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time just getting this finished up. Um, there is some more roughness over here. In fact, there's quite a lot more over this side, those last three. So I'm leaving them to last um, so I can get everything else sort of flattened out. Some of these have turned up quite nice. I'm going to have to really buff through these quite hard, so we'll see what we can do with this without any power tools. It's fairly late at night and I'm trying to do it without making too much noise, hence using just my hands. So we'll see what we can do with that first. decided to go ahead and do it without the camera however I've mixed pretty much a hundred parts filler to one part gardener and I'm just scraping it all up flattening it all out over and over again getting rid of all the air bubbles and making sure it's nicely evenly mixed throughout or a good solid mix of filler hardware. Oh, no. So, for example, that bit there, you can literally just shape it roughly, maybe use two fingers, edge it off. Very important to remember with this, in this case. Less is actually more, because whatever you put on, if it's too much, you will have to take back off. So, bear that in mind. While it's still workable, you've got sort of a, depending on what sort of mix you do, maybe five to eight minute working time window. And I can sort of follow the line of the wheel pretty nicely. 
as I said, not too much all in one place. Try and get it uh, so pretty much as close as you can to the right shape the first time. Because whatever you put on that's too much, guess who's taking it back off again? I don't know how well you can see it on this, but there's actually quite a big nick here. So what I'm going to do with this. So I'm going to just add straight in a little bit, and then what I'm going to do is just use my fingers to just sort of roughly mark up the shape initially. see looking around the wheel I've got a few areas of filler this area especially was quite bad so I don't know how much you saw in the last shot but the majority of it has been done with fingers my point being areas such as this had quite a large dent in it and using your fingers like so so if you follow around you can just about make a good rough outside wheel shape for the actual lip near enough first time uh, I'm gonna leave this another 20 minutes I'm gonna start sanding it back and we're gonna see whether or not we're gonna need to make a second pass off filler if it starts Gaining a weird, hard consistency. That is too late for that. Bin it, make some more. If it feels warm and if it's tacky, do not touch it. It's really important to leave this long enough. So 99% of all end result is the preparation, the fact that I've cleaned it down, the fact that I've sanded it all back so that every bit of paint is as shine free as possible and has a nice key to it. If you're at the point when you're adding primer and you haven't bothered to add that little bit of filler and the primer doesn't fill it, you're going to have to sand it back and actually go at it again. So you might as well try and get it perfect every single stage. Right, this appears to have hardened up quite nicely now. I'm going to leave this a tiny, tiny, tiny bit longer and I'm literally just going to use a medium sort of coarse tee. Uh, it's a foam pad, both sides are sandpaper and it's just going to give me a nice, fairly soft result. I'm really using very little power at all. I'm literally just letting the paper, I'm almost brushing across it like this, you can hear I'm still taking some off, so I'm literally just letting the paper do the work. I don't want to take off too much too soon. It's a good thing as well. Shut your eye and use your little finger. Your little finger is very sensitive. If you shut your eye, look away you can feel things that you wouldn't be able to feel if you were looking straight at them. You look and you go, mm, nah. And then you look away and you go, oh, there is a bump. Your sense of touch is increased if you remove your sense of sight.
finished shaping it, I'm just quickly I'm gonna I'm using a pair of old boxes actually. I'm never gonna be using these again, these are really nice and old. Just any rag or anything like that. Don't use too much if you're just gonna do it with water because filler is porous. So ideally don't use water, use a degreaser. I'm just taking the worst of the filler dust and dirt off the wheel so that when it gets painted I have a nice smooth surface. You see what I keep saying about having a nice smooth surface? It's important to not have any dirt, residue, dust on this. Paint is thin, especially if the paint is shiny. Every tiny imperfection will, I'm not saying might, will show up. It is imperative, it is pertinent, it is very, very important, indeed critical, in fact, that this surface is as dust-free, dirt-free, grease-free as physically possible. Unfortunately, my camera decided that while it would like to film, it would not like to record audio, so I'm just going to dub over. So what I am doing here is I am just lightly, very, very lightly initially, going over it with the initial black coat. Chrome has to be painted over black. The only way you can get the depth to the shine of the paint is for it to be sort of translucent slightly see-through over black. That's the only way that you get the sort of the 3D depth to it. Gloss black, matte black, whatever, some black, doesn't matter. Okay, so as you can see in this clip, what I'm doing now is I'm spraying on the chrome effect paint in a thin, sort of ghosty, uh, translucent layer. The idea being that you'll be able to see the black at least a little bit through it. You'll see that a little bit later on. Only apply one coat. If you apply two coats, you're gonna cover over the black too much, especially with a spray can because it tends to go on fairly thick. You just want to use one coat and stop. As soon as one, the paint is sort of solid and not very pigmented, and two, when you start getting the chrome effect. So it's quite important to remember the speed of your strokes, not to over spray on any particular areas because you will get runs and to remember to keep your distances at around 15 to 20 centimeters away from the product that you are painting at any one time. As I'm sure you can see from this clip following that last one, this actually does look a little bit less chromey than it did when the paint was going directly on. This is after two coats of clear. This is one pack clear out of a can, so it's very important that this gets buffed. You'll possibly see a more realistic chrome effect later on once I've polished it down with 2000 wet and dry and then with some cut and compound and polish.
So, my original intention with this was to cut it back originally with some sort of probably 1500 then 2000 grit wet sandpaper and the way I would have done that is literally just got some 1500 and 2000 grit sandpaper and got it completely ringing wet with warm water with a little dab of uh, washing up liquid which helps to uh, keep it nice and smooth and I would have just rubbed it back until it was all very flat and then from there I would have polished it. Upon looking back at the wheels I decided they actually aren't that bad. There's not a huge amount of orange peel so what I'm going to use is this stuff which is literally just a cutting paste and a sponge that is, the, is specifically designed for use with cutting paste. So this is literally exactly the same as what you get on a buffer pad if you were to use an orbital polisher but it is just in a handheld shape. So I'm going to get on with this, get a little bit of paste onto this, spread it about and see what progress I can make with matting it up, flattening it down, followed by some proper after finishing polish with a microfiber cloth. to be exactly the same as chrome. Chrome paint will never come up exactly the same but you can see that there is quite a shiny effect to it. You can also see as a result of my filler work around the edges it is a lot more smooth than it originally was before. There's no exposed metal anymore and overall the entire wheel looks a huge amount better. I will in a future episode of CB car style how to be doing a feature on how to clean your wheels. At that point, you will see with the center cap in, with the little M Sport badge on, with the tires fitted, and you'll see the overall effect that it has and the, the amount that it can revamp your car. But for now, I'm going to wrap it up. This is pretty easy, to be honest, pretty easy. If you're prepared to sit down and do it yourself, and take a little bit of time and not go by half on it. You need to actually make the effort to make sure that everything that you do is absolutely perfect. Otherwise you will notice little imperfections. I myself have noticed a fair number of small imperfections that if I were to redo it, uh, if I had a bit more time, I would just make it that little bit more perfect. But as for normal wheels, which I'll probably be using over the winter, I just wanted to repaint them, give them a little bit of a new lease of life, a little bit of a uh, future proofing and this is the result. Thanks very much for watching. If you liked it, click the like button. If you liked it and want to see more, click the subscribe button and we will see you another time on another episode of CB Car Style.